Good morning, my name is Hae Sung Kim, advisor of Kim Gangnam Labor Law Firm. Today, uh, last uh, time, we have covered the labor cases uh, quarterly publication, spring edition of 2024. And uh, there's a particularly interesting article uh, uh, by uh, labor attorney Jung Bong Su regarding the uh, incorrect uh, administrative interpretation of calculation of severance pay, whether it's based on the ordinary wage or average wage. So today, could you explain details about this, why you wrote this article and what mm. is the conflict? Okay. Uh, hello, how are you today? This is uh, Bong Su Jung, Korean labor team. Thank you for asking. So this is uh, about uh, severance pay calculation, uh, whether uh, it is uh, calculated based on ordinary wage or average wage. So severance pay should be paid and calculated based on average wage. That is uh, uh, stipulated in the um, employee uh, retirement benefit uh, security act. So. Uh, there are no article it must be calculated based on the ordinary wage but there are one c uh, exceptional condition um, in the labor stand act uh, when the uh, average wage is lower than ordinary wage then in this case uh, ordinary wage is uh, uh, used uh, should be used um, but i think uh, this article uh, come the labor ministry guideline said that uh, some severance pay should be calculated in case uh, the ordinary wage is uh, higher than uh, average wage. But there is uh, a lot of confusion um, by this guideline. So it caused uh, many uh, some conflict in the labor manage, uh, labor management in many companies. Uh, for example, when employee received uh, uh, 2 million won each month and worked one year and designed after one year, then uh, company paid uh, 2 million won as the name of severance pay additionally. So then employee uh, the expect to receive 2.4 million won. So it is calculated not average wage but ordinary wage. So uh, when and the, when employee receive the fixed income, fixed salary, then always uh, ordinary wage is higher. In that case, uh, but uh, like labor ministry guideline said that uh, it should be calculated based on uh, higher ordinary wage than the average wage. Uh, I, in my opinion, it is wrong. The reason is uh, uh, the employee uh, retirement Benefit Security Act. So it said, uh, like for example, the T, uh, DB, uh, I mean DC retirement pension. So in that case, uh, company should contribute one twelfth of uh, employee's uh, annual salary. So one twelfth means uh, uh, one month salary for each uh, service period, like uh, I mean service year. So that means. Uh, 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 the total uh, annual salary, this means average wage, not the ordinary wage. So basically, ordinary wage is calculated based on some working hours, uh, for example. So working hour is calculated differently uh, compared to the average wage. Uh, like working hour is 40 hours per week, then uh, 8 hours uh, added for weekly paid holiday, then uh, 48 hours regarded as uh, weekly uh, working hours, but um, actually that one eight hours is missed. The reason is uh, uh, the contractor working hours or legal stand working hours has been reduced from 48 hours to uh, 44, then 40 hours. Then uh, hourly, uh, the ordinary wage usually is uh, higher. So hourly ordinary wage is calculated based on monthly fixed salary uh, divided by uh, 209 hours. Where 209 hours come from is uh, like uh, in a week, uh, 40 hours employee work plus one paid holiday, then 48 hours. Uh, 48 hours regarded as weekly uh, working hours. Then uh, there are four, 
four weeks in a month, then times 4.2, uh, 4.3 uh, weeks, uh, then uh, 209 hours is uh, calculated. So uh, one month salary divided by 209 hours, then uh, employee can get the hourly ordinary wage, then uh, times eight hours, it can be a daily wage. But uh, actually, this is uh, designed to calculate overtime or paid holidays or something, but not the average wage. So uh, ordinary wage is uh, always uh, higher. The reason is uh, the ordinary wage calculated based on six days, not the seven days, while the average wage calculates always uh, seven days. So uh, like according to the government guideline, almost every company they are violating uh, labor law because they are uh, respecting the calculate based on law like uh, seven pay should be calculated based on uh, every wage and not the ordinary wage. So I think uh, the Supreme, I mean the prosecution office rejected um, uh, the claim or some labor inspector's decision that a company violated by uh, less, uh, paying less than uh, required by their uh, the concept. But uh, I think he, uh, this is uh, uh, the prosecutor's uh, prosecutor office's decision. I fully agree with that. So, uh, like uh, uh, severance pay uh, should be calculated based on uh, the average wage in normal case. But in case employee has been absent so many times, then uh, in that case, in order to protect uh, average wage, the uh, ordinary wage can be used instead. So, but uh, the currently, the labor inspectors, uh, they make a different decision. So it has caused a lot of problems. So my opinion is that uh, um, seventh pay should be calculated based on uh, the average wage, not the uh, uh, ordinary wage. Yeah, mm. well, yeah this is a quite a uh, uh, conflict uh, uh, problem. And uh, it can be a uh, problem, uh, especially the labor ministry seems to be representing the labor employees' uh, situation mm. rather than the employers. <laughs> uh, so if, uh, if the severance pay is calculated based on the uh, ordinary wage, mm -hmm. then the, the, the amount will be very high. Mm -hmm. from the employer's point of view yeah. and uh, this can be a very uh, strong dispute from the employer's point of view. Yeah, yeah. Beca yeah because of uh, the uh, uh, labor minister's guideline, uh, uh, it has caused a lot of problem to many companies. So the case uh, like uh, when employee received 2 million won, a uh, company has to pay 2.4 million won uh, for seventh pay when employee resigned after serving one year. But wha what about employee received uh, much more than two million won? Then the salary gap is much higher. So by this law, uh, maybe uh, I think uh, the, it's uh, not right, the right guideline. So I think uh, it should be uh, calculated based on law like average wage, not the uh, ordinary wage. So I think uh, if uh, labor ministry maintained their uh, guideline, same guideline before, then it will cause a lot of problem. But the labor, I mean, the, the prosecution officer rejected the labor inspector's decision for violation. So in this case, I think uh, this is uh, uh, right, their decision, uh, I really support that. So, uh, my opinion is that uh, government uh, guideline should be changed by following law. So their translation or their guideline is uh, uh, they have the loophole, uh, like uh, they didn't understand clearly about this uh, uh, case, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so from the employer's point of view, I hope that they can, many employers should consult with a specialist like mm, a Hangnam yeah. labor law firm because this is not a very s mm. simple issue. And yeah. uh, if uh, they can hire the advisor like Hangnam labor law firm, they can, we can represent them.
to yeah. deal with the labor yeah. ministry. Yeah, thank you for <laughs> such a comment. Yeah, I fully I agree. So it will cause a lot of problems. So we successfully represent the employer and we um, depended the uh, uh, workers' uh, uh, demand. Uh, so I think this uh, can be a good example. So our quarterly magazine labor cases uh, um, include, uh, I mean, the contain this uh, uh, case. Also, uh, I previously I contributed the related article. So also I contained uh, such a uh, article in that the quarterly magazine. So if you read uh, this uh, part, then uh, you will understand more easily. Thank okay. you very much for your comment. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.